All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 14th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2024. Saw a story yesterday, the 13th. No, maybe it was today, but it was dated. I saw it dated someplace else yesterday. Now, I'm going to go to the original source, which is Vatican News. I saw on this page here, uh, you can actually find this message on the YouTube. So, I wonder if the Vatican, uh, has anybody ever can threatened to cancel the Pope? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so, the Pope was in Singapore addressing the Singaporean youth. To unity, calls the Sing Singaporean youth to unity during interreligious dialogue. Well, we've seen a lot of that. Yeah, the precursor to COVID, back in October, no, was it the end of September or beginning of October, I think, of 2019, the, the uh, Amazonian Synod and the Pachamama scandal. Oh, yeah, so po uh, Francis revealed himself as a total pagan, an idol-worshipping, Active pagan even brought the the pagan priests and priestesses, the uh, uh, what do you call the uh, uh, shamans and shamanesses into the into Saint Peter's before the high altar and paraded a Pachamama idol. Now Pachamama is Mother Earth idol around in the holy canoe and on the, with the priest to their their own pagan priests. Before the high altar, right before the altar that's dedicated to Christ and his and his sacrifice on the cross, right? It's what it's supposed to be. That's what it represents. Basically giving Christ the you know which finger. Unreal. And most of the Protestant Christian world paid no attention. Most of the Catholic world said, oh, isn't that nice? It's a little image of a pregnant Virgin Mary. Not pregnant with a child, pregnant with the earth. The mother of the earth, the goddess. The ancient goddess. One of the primordial deities of the pagan world. The earth is not our mother. We don't come from the earth. Our bodies make might, but that's it. So anyway, here's the story. Uh, yeah, the Pope, uh, that, that good, uh, you know, there's an old saying among Catholics I hear, why be holier than the Pope? So what did the Pope do here? Other than his usual gibberish. So the, yeah, it was on Friday, Friday the 13th, appropriate. Okay, so I'm going to skip that stuff. You see here, he's praying with a, a, a lot of people that are not Christians. Well, I would say the Pope and his uh, fellow travelers over here are not Christians either. They certainly don't kneel to the Lord Jesus. Together in unity and hope. Uh, the youth. You know, the, Hitler wanted the youth too. Dictatorships take away dialogue. Well... Dialogue with what? You want dialogue with the devil? Do not be afraid. Okay, so here's here's a uh, a, a selfie with the, with the Pope and his entourage of youth. He's busy corrupting. 
so this is what made the news all over was not the other gibberish that the Pope is always spewing out, but rather what he said about the, uh, the way to God. He finally made it absolutely crystal clear. He finally revealed himself, as far as I'm concerned, as a disciple of Pierre de Chardin, uh, the, uh, the the guy that's noted, known for the Omega Point. Look that up on Wikipedia. Uh, he was a uh, a Catholic Jesuit scholar uh, whose writings. He, he was a uh, an anthropologist an evolutionist, and his uh, theology, if you want to call it that, uh, was a mishmash and was just coming out and was being popularized among uh, especially young Catholics. It's popular to this very day if you want to go to the New Age section or spiritual section or whatever they call it today in uh, any bookstore. You'll find his works. You'll find them in occult bookstores. Uh, why? Because he was a um, pantheist, panentheist. Uh, look up Omega Point on Wikipedia. Uh, it'll give you a summary. That's all you need to know. <laughs> you don't really want to get any, any deeper than that because you'll, a summary often gives you more clarity because it doesn't overwhelm you with information. So anyway, he was, his writings were not exactly suppressed by the Catholic Church, but they were put on a do not use for instruction list. Uh, uh, and uh, Pope Francis, in his first true encyclopedia, Laudato Si, uh, he rehabilitated by quoting uh, T.R. de Chardin. And the Omega Point basically, uh, give you an idea, it's, it's sort of, in, in Hinduism, and I suppose in Buddhism, maybe some other things, because there's, there's, there's pretty much a common basic doctrine between in all Eastern mysticism and occultism. Occultism is Eastern mysticism. Um, native worship is, you, you find it all over the world, really. <clears throat> because Satan rules this world. If you're not in Christ, you're children of Satan, as Jesus said and the apostles taught. So, anyway, in uh, T.R. de Chardin's uh, cosmology, uh, you have, as in Hinduism, you have originally uh, the one, the singularity, that what might be called God. And the God is not, that God is not a creator. It's a bit like Aristotle's hypothetical deity. And so there's the, the God who can only contemplate him is navel. So it's like, he's not the creator. He's not the God of the scriptures. And something happened. There was an imbalance. It, it, it's like the Big Bang. You know, the, the, the theory of, well, what caused, how, how did everything come out of nothing? Well, there was this quantum fluctuation in space or whatever, and that caused the uh, materialization of the universe. It's instability. Well, first of all, you can't have quantum fluctuation where there's nothing. It's a property of matter and energy. So you, you can't. In spite of the Big Bang Theory, there has to be something there even for that atheist uh, antichrist theory to work. So they have to start with something. It's a no quantum fluctuation in nothing. That's like uh, nothing got up and walked. It's like, it doesn't make sense. So if, if you run into uh, somebody that tries to, to poison you with a, with the Big Bang, uh, say, well, what caused the Big Bang? And when they say something like a quantum fluctuation, then you say, quantum fluctuation in what? And if they say nothing, you say, Where, how can you have a quantum, quantum fluctuation? Quantum fluctuation is a, a change in energy state in matter. 
the energy level that is contained in the matter, like a, an electron goes from one orbital thing to another. Um, when it's, it sort of, gra the energy is stored there, it raises an electron, and then it, when it falls back down, it releases. A, so it absorbs a quanta, a quantum of energy that's equal to that, that jump in states. And then when it, uh, because it's this, uh, the higher state tends to be unstable, then when it falls back down, it releases the same quanta, quantity of energy, a photon of energy. But if you don't have photons, you don't have energy, you don't have matter, how can you have a quantum fluctuation? That's like moving a chess piece with no board and no chess pieces. Like, I don't understand. Throw it at them. Let them explain their silliness. Okay, so here, the, but uh, back to T.R. Dick Chardin. So, and Hinduism. So he absorbed, has this idea of probably he was over in that area, and he's not a Christian. He's just a Jesuit. And Jesuits aren't known for being particularly faithful to scriptures, but that way. Anyway, the uh, it doesn't come from scripture. It comes from tradition. So it's, it's not, there's no anchor there. And if you're not anchored in Christ, if you're not born again, you're free-floating. You'll glom onto anything. You're like a a a, a, a radical, a, a, what a, a free radical floating around your body. You know, it's destructive. Anyway, the the idea was that you have the the singularity uh, that you might call God, the one, the thing, the one. That's everything, but nothing. This is not a person. This is not a personal deity. And something there was instability in this in this thing, in this singularity. And that caused the singularity to explode. It no longer was a singularity. It broke into pieces, and that began, that, that was the manifestation of matter. So God exploded. He went insane. Something happened there. And he fell apart and produced everything. And see, in, in Hinduism or in Buddhism, uh, being an individual, being a being, being a self is evil. That is the problem. That is the original problem, that you exist, because to exist is to suffer, according to Buddha. And so the idea is, is non-existence. For Buddhists, the hope is to be blown out to cease to exist, to be reabsorbed into the singularity. Uh, for Hindus, it is through reincarnation and everything else to work back into God. And then uh, many of the sects of Hinduism and Buddhism practice meditation and other spiritual exercises. Uh, yoga is one of them. In order to induce a state of mind an altered state of consciousness where you realize the truth that you are God. You are identical with this one being that is everything, Pan pantheism. So all is one. And you recognize that you're one, that you are the one also. Uh, what was her name? The actress that did the movie on the New Age, Shirley MacLaine. And that point in the, there where her mentor gets her to stretch out her arms and say, I am God. That's what that is, that kind of enlightening experience, so-called, where you realize you are the God. You are, you're not a, a God, but you are the one. There's, there's no individualization there at all. It's the idea is to be, cease to be, to cease to be is the goal. Now, this is in Catholic, Catholicism, the whole centering movement, centering prayer, is to go fall into yourself and realize your own divinity, that you are God. Not a God, but God. 
What well, if you fall into yourself? What do you find in that hole? Self. God's not there. Not in your flesh. To quiet your mind and do not think and realize you are God. Yeah, see that that's that's enlightenment. As they say. And in Pierre de Chardin's and probably Francis's theology, uh, Christ is working to to reintegrate the cosmos back into God. This cosmic explosion, God blew apart. Now he's, you know, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and now Pierre de Chardin is trying to pick the pieces up and put the egg back together. It don't work. You, you cannot unsplatter an egg. <laughs> no, you can't. No. You, know, you might be able to glue the shell back together, but there's nothing in it. <laughs> Try to get everything back in there. No, it's not going to work. Okay, so th that's, that, but that's the idea that Christ, Christ didn't come to save sinners. But Christ did is he came to save God. To reenter. To, uh, this is... Uh, it talks about different forces, things that that uh, uh, anti-union forces, things that that, that, that the 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 force that of disintegration. Uh, he, uh, uh, Deschardins uses different terms for it, uh, so he gets some vector algebra in there too. <laughs> this is the confused man, and, but then there's this overall force of integration that over time. God is trying to draw all the pieces back in. Recover all his members got, that got blown off in the cosmic blast. So, And Christ came for that purpose, not to save sinners, but to save God, really. In my words, not Deschardins. But the idea is there. The idea is, okay, so Christ, when he, he died... Now, why did he die? I don't quite understand that. How does this fit in? Doesn't matter. This is you're calling it. You're talking about occultism here. You're talking about New Age. Doesn't matter. I mean, what is it? What is it? Catholics? What is what does reason have to do with that uh, mess? But so this isn't Catholicism at all either. This is something else. This is like anti-Catholic stuff, which is why he was put on the do not use list. Um, but the I, uh, but the Jesuits, I mean, they, they've been uh, the avant-garde of apostasy and Roman Catholicism in a lot of ways. So, what happens here? They were the ant. They, they they were created to destroy the Protestant Revo um, Revolution, the, the Protestant Reformation. That was the purpose of the Jesuits. But. Uh, So this would definitely destroy the Protestant Reformation if you adopt this theology. Uh, this is this is on the outside of this is on the fringe of weird. But so Christ came, died, and rose, but he didn't rise bodily and then ascend into heaven. He arose and incarnated himself into all of creation. So creation itself has become the body of Christ, not the church. Creation. And he is working. Uh, he is a force of reintegration to bring all the pieces back into the singularity. The cosmic black hole that T.R. de Chardin calls God. The, uh, the omega point. Uh, as a form of cosmic evolution. And this was going to re, we're going to accelerate and technology and everything else. And at some point, the, the earth will develop planetary consciousness. This could be right. They could have done a Star Trek movie about this, you know. Uh, they did do a Star Trek movie about this, come to think of it. With the, with the thing, the, the, this American space probe that was. Upgraded by a machine race to omniscience and omnipotence to accomplish its mission. Remember that one? And then it had to merge with, with humanity to achieve its goal at the end. Yeah. Huh. 
I think Elon Musk may have seen that movie and taken it to heart. Uh, <clears throat> with his uh, brain implant that wires you into his network. <laughs> Just what I don't need. So, but but th this is so the goal the, the goal of the singularity is to pull himself back together so draw all things back into him until it becomes just a singularity including the the, ev the cosmic evolution of the planet the planet uh, going into becoming a, uh, a, a living thinking entity on its own uh, all the human things sort of merging together into a planetary union unity Bible students, alarm bells should be going off right there. And then from there, it'd be drawn with everything else back into the singularity, into the giant. So you go from the, the, the cosmic Big Bang to the cosmic squish. So and then I suppose it's like an oscillating universe where then God explodes again and it starts all over. Because what furnishes the stability? Nothing. It's nonsense. But I, it, Francis keeps manifesting and saying things that, that, that uh, lead me to believe that he was definitely a disciple of the ideas of Pierre de Chardin. Uh, and he, when he speaks, he reveals his theology. So what did he say now? Let's get down to the nitty gritty of why this was all over the place. Remember the airplane ep uh, interview episode early in his papacy? When he was asked on the plane by a reporter um, whether or not he thought homosexuals could be priests, and his answer was, who am I to judge? Uh, isn't that what Pope's supposed to do? I don't know. I don't recognize his authority. So what does he say? What did he say that, you know, most of the articles you see only are in this particular area. What did he say that, that made such a, a thing when he's addressing uh, the, uh, the youth in Singapore? Well, down in the article here at Vatican News, oops, again, I pressed the wrong button. Down at the bottom of the article here, it says this. The Holy Father went on to, let me boost the text. Oh, too big. The Holy Father went on to invite those gathered to join him in praying together for one another. Now, these are people of all different sects and faiths. Uh, Buddhists, uh, who knows what, what, I don't know what's in Singapore. There should be some Hindus, probably some uh, uh, Muslims, you know, that's down that area in Malaysia. Uh, what is that? Micro, uh, where is that? Malaysia, I think. Someplace, an island nation. The Holy Father went on to invite those who gather, uh, gather to join him in praying together for one another. May God bless all of us. And when the time passes and you are not young people, but older and become grandparents, he urged to pass this on. This will pass what on? God is God for all. Well, that is true. There is only one God and only one Christ and one way of salvation. And Christ died for the sins of the entire world. Every single person. There is and will be. At least in this age. And if God is the God for all, he said, then we are all sons and daughters of God. I don't know how you make that connection, but he did. So if there's one God and it's, it, God is for, is for all, sounds like Piper. If God, God is for us, what does that mean? Uh, then we are all sons and daughters of God. No, no. <laughs> That's not what the Bible says. Far be it from Francis to let such a small thing as the word of God interfere with his ideas. Yeah, see, they uh, made that large here. This, of course, the Vatican did. We are all sons and daughters of God. He just torpedoed. No, he just nuked Roman Catholicism. 
totally nuked it. Now, this isn't a huge jump from Vatican II. It's an evolutionary jump from Vatican II. And if, a pun on France, uh, T.R. de Chardin there, who was an evolutionist. All religions are paths to reach God, said Pope Francis. This contradicts everything that Rome has taught up until Vatican II. But Vatican II didn't go this far. Mm -mm. No, no, no. They are, to make a comparison, like different languages. This is ultimate woke. This is ultimate divine equity. Everybody gets the same. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what religion you have. You're all a child of God, and you're all going to the same place, maybe, to, to the black hole, to reabsorption, I guess. I don't know. See, all this is consistent with Pierre de Chardin. Pierre de Chardin. But with that historic uh, Catholic doctrine? No. Historically, the Catholic Church is always a sort of the Roman Catholic Church. The Eastern Catholic Church makes the same assertion, but they say they are the one true church. But the, the, what we've heard for over a millennia is uh, uh, outside the church. Rome, Rome is the one true church, and outside of that church, they mean, the church, there is no salvation. Well, Francis doesn't even mention Jesus Christ. Well, that'd be divisive. Because Jesus, who is the Savior and Lord and God for Christians, is something else for Muslims and something else for Hindus. They acknowledge him. Most of them do. In uh, Islam, he's Isa, the son of Mary, a, a, perhaps the greatest of prophets, who is coming again, but he is not God. He is not the Son of God. He is not the Savior. He did not die on a cross. Not, you know, they, they may worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, Abraham, but they worship, worship him in ignorance. Like the Samaritans. Jesus said uh, that to the woman of Samaria that uh, you worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know. Because salvation is of the Jews. From the Jews. Comes out of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Out of David. Out of the son of David, right? Born in Bethlehem, as prophesied. All religions are paths to reach God, said Pope Francis. They are, to make a comparison like different languages, different dialects to get there. But God is God for everyone. So all religions lead to the same place. I remember a Lutheran pastor of a large, uh, well, mega church, technically, over a thousand members, who was teaching a Bible study using the book Paths Less Followed, which has nothing to do with Christianity. And he was drawing on the board uh, a, a mountain and all these different roads that went to the same place. And he said, it's, it's like this. And I said, and he was quoting, I think he was using the author of that book as a foil. And I happened to be sitting in on this, and I said, uh, do you believe this? And, of course, as prof university professors do also, they always use other people's ideas as foils for what they believe. They don't want to say exactly what they believe themselves. They try to avoid that because that will create division, like Jesus said. Do not think that I've come to bring peace, but a sword. From now on, I'll be father against son, and... Uh, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. Why? Because 
Christ divides. You're with him or you're against him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Did he not say that? So if you oppose the very teachings, the very words of Christ, we know what Francis does because he's already edited the Lord's Prayer. I don't like this. I'm going to change the prayer example given us by the Son of God. It's not like there's a textual variation. No, he just changed it arbitrarily. I, he's, he doesn't like, lead, do, lead us not into temptation. Well, God would never do that. God won't put his people to the test. Yes, he does. He says so. He brings judgment on his enemies, but he will test his people. Do you truly want to follow me? Jesus chased away many, many, many disciples. Remember his when he starts talking about uh, that I am the bread that has come down from heaven. And talking about exclusive salvation in him. Many could not, lay, or unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you cannot follow me. You cannot be my disciple. He was not talking about the Last Supper. He was talking about himself. He was talking about, uh, he was making it very clear that he is the only way. He is salvation. He is God's grace. He is God's salvation. He is God. And he did claim to be God. The Gospel of John is very clear, multiple times. And the Pharisees recognized it, and repeatedly they tried to stone him to death because of what he's told them. Francis denies what Christ says. He's an enemy of Christ. He is an anti-Christ. He opposes Jesus Christ. Opposes what Jesus said, that he alone is the only way to the Father. So what do Catholics do now? I mean, the Catholics have been going like this since Francis got in. Like, what are we going to do? Catholics can be saved the same way as every other Christian is saved. By grace alone, God's grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. Not by your works. Your works aren't good enough. Your works are done in the flesh. You need to be born again, and baptism didn't do that. I got baptized, not in the Catholic Church, but Rome recognizes the legitimacy of other baptisms if they're done in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good enough. Even an unbeliever can baptize a child or anyone in case of necessity. Is that not true? You've got a child, uh, an infant that's in danger of imminent death. You, uh, some A nurse can go over to the, to the sink and baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's considered valid because it had the right formula. So if an, if an unbeliever can baptize, why do you need special priests? I don't know. They had to create doctrines that made them essential to make the Catholic institution necessary. Yet there's a long, long, long history of how this all came about. But now they've got Francis that nukes his, the Church of Jesus Christ. See, if all ways lead to God, you don't need Rome anymore, do you? If God is the Father of all people, or God is the God of all people, which is true, but that but the problem is, according to the Scripture, sinners are alienated from God. The issue is, how can you be reconciled with God? And that's what the cross is all about, and faith is all about. 
but it's personal faith in Christ and what he did. It's not faith in an institution. Read the scriptures. Almost all Catholics have Bible. Catholic Bible is good enough. It's the same gospel in it. Just don't pay too much attention to the footnotes. Read the words of Jesus and the apostles. So, all the Catholic apologists out there, uh, Aikens and all those people over at Catholic Answers, what are you going to do now? Go out of business? I know what you're going to try to do. You're going you're gonna to make an excuse. Well, the, the Pope was not speaking infallibly. Well, who are you to judge that? What does Vatican I say? Which is where the infallibility of the Pope was declared as a dogma. So if you don't believe that, you're not saved. It's a necessary belief, supposedly. I don't know how you keep adding necessary beliefs to the faith delivered once for all to the saints, but I'm particular about things like that. I'm a biblical Christian. That's where my, author my, ex my external authority is the scriptures, not the Pope. I'm in a way better place than you people. And you know it, don't you? Anyway, so what 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 are uh, Jimmy Akins and the guys over there at uh, Catholic Answers and all the other Catholic apologists, and all the other Catholic priests, and everything going to do now? Why why should people go to Rome find a nice cozy religion like Joel Osteen's? Since that's just as valid as Rome now. He just annulled the Catholic Church. He denied that outside the church there is no salvation. Everybody's saved. All roads lead to God. Vatican II didn't even go that far. And it was almost universal. This is total universalism here. What are you going to do? Why a rational person would find a more comfortable religion than Roman Catholicism. Besides, how can a Roman Catholic be comfortable with Francis? People like, you know, a lot of people, you see these celebrities that are concerned about the collapse of, of the United States and collapse of civilization, going to to Roman Catholicism because they think it's old and stable. <laughs> yeah, familiarity will breed contempt. It's 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 this is Francis is Francis is destroyer. So what are you going to do? Could go back to Christ in the Bible. Go back to the faith delivered once for all unto the saints. Catholics believe that, right? You believe in the authority of Scripture. At, at this point, you gotta that tradition stuff is out the window. Francis, the the uh, Francis as a teacher of the faithful, that's out the window. He's an antichrist. He's an enemy of Christ demonstrated over and over and over his his attempts to destroy the traditional Latin mass. To me, you know, I don't have any skin in that game, but, you know, I'm, if you're going to be a Catholic, why not stick with the tradition? Why not stick with the universal church language? He, he's determined to stamp it out. Why? How can you hold to Vatican I and hold to Vatican II? How can you hold to Vatican I or hold to Francis? You're between a rock and a hard place. Christ is your only escape. You don't have to become a Protestant. You just have to trust in him. Go back to your scriptures and read the Gospels. Read the Epistles. Find out what the faith is that was delivered once for all unto the saints. 
No one can be, go wrong following that. No one can be, go, go wrong following Christ. No one can go wrong following the way he and his apostles delivered onto his people, onto his church. Christ's church. Everyone that belongs to Jesus Christ is a member of his body, of his church. The church is the body of Christ. It is, consists of all those who belong to him. All those in whom he dwells. Make sure you've been born again in reality, that Christ dwells in you. It's not a doctrine, it's a living reality. People are born again through faith alone. When you come to Christ, especially when the Holy Spirit convicts you of your sinfulness, and you come to Christ because of your sin, not because you want God to do something for you, but because of your sin, and you want to be reconciled to God. And this should be easy for Catholics. Catholics haven't turned God's grace into a, a, some form of magic to get your pleasures, like many Protestants have. Many evangelicals and other things that are actually wrongly termed either one of those. You have to deal with sin all the time, right? Well, Christ has died once for all for the sin of the whole world. And that atonement is in him. What you call the Mass is what Jesus gave us to remind us of that of the fact that he has already died and paid for all your sins, past, present, and future, in a once-for-all sacrifice that cannot be repeated. And I know Catholic doctrine says, well, we're not repeating, it's not a new sacrifice, it's a representation of Christ's body and blood. Okay. Okay, that, that's almost tolerable. But it's not a sacrifice, it, it is just a reminder of that one sacrifice that was accomplished almost 2,000 years ago. It's not a new sacrifice or a continuing sacrifice because it's once for all completed sacrifice. Otherwise, you have no salvation. And that is in Christ. So if you belong to him, if you are in him, if his spirit dwells in you, which is the identification, you know, Paul says, examine yourself. Does Christ dwell in you? First John is all about how to know you actually have eternal life. Are these things that he talks about, are they in your life? You need to be in Christ. You need him in you. You need to be reconciled to God through faith in him, trust in him. Mary can't help you. The saints can't help you. Pope Francis is trying to make sure you never come to salvation. He has destroyed the remnants of Christianity inside Roman Catholicism. He is an antichrist. I'm not telling you to become a Protestant. I'm telling you to become a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, a son of God or a daughter of God through faith in Christ. Call to him to, for him to save you. Salvation is God's work. So it's not something new to Roman Catholicism. Augustine realized this. Augustine was confused, but he... You know, that you, these things exist in the past. It's not something new. Rome was co corrupted, but the gospel wasn't obliterated. People just added things to it that you can't add to it. Like works. The Apostle Paul made that very clear. See, when we say that... that Christ alone, and faith alone in Christ alone, is not sufficient for salvation? We're saying what he did on the cross is not sufficient. We are dishonoring Christ. 
We are trampling his blood underfoot. We are incurring the wrath of the Father when we do that because we don't accept God's testimony about what he's done in Christ. That the Father gave his, gave his only begotten Son, sent his Son into the world to die on that cross for the sins of the world, that you and I might be reconciled to God through faith in Christ. That's all God requires as he did of Abraham. Abraham believed God and was reckoned unto him as righteousness. Simply through believing the promises of God. And so it is with us. Regardless of what religious tradition or, or matrix or whatever you're coming out of, God calls us to come to him, to be reconciled to him through faith in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. The Mass is not a way to get the grace of God. It's a reminder of how we get the grace of God, through faith. Not by eating the bread. You're not even allowed to drink the wine, usually. It's there. It was instituted by Christ, and Christians have always practiced this, except some fringe cults. Because said, Christ, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. The very evening before he was crucified. The Jewish calendar the same day. He took the Passover bread, which was a, for remembrance of the deliverance of God's people from the slavery and bondage of Egypt into becoming his people and following him. Jesus said, this Passover is really about me delivering my people from the bondage of sin and death back to reconciliation with God and to God's eternal purpose in creating humanity to be the very temple of God Almighty himself. And the Lord Jesus is building his temple, his church, out of living stones, those who've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's who you need to follow. Christ, not Antichrist. Christ alone. Salvation is in him. The Mass proclaims it. Every time the Mass proclaims it, God has not left you without a witness. Trust in Christ himself to be reconciled with God. Cry out to him, save me. And he will do it. Jesus said, all those who seek, find. All those who ask, it's given unto them. All those who, who uh, knock, it's opened unto them. What is he talking about? Those who come to God for salvation. Not for a favor, but for salvation, which is God's purpose in sending his son. That the sinners might be saved and reconciled to God. It's available today.